I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians and protectors on the land in which this video takes place, the Cubby Cubby people. I pay my respects to elders both past, present and emerging. This story takes place on Cubby Cubby country in the Reckliff Peninsula, a place rich in waterways, in land and at sea. It is here where I was born, raised and have worked with at-risk youth for the past 12 years. For me, my awareness of Cubby Cubby practices, values and beliefs started here at Kippering State School when I was in grade 5 back in 1997. In one of the many languages of the Gubby Gubby people in Ningi Ningi, I learned that the name Kippering meant two things. One, young uninitiated man and ring related to Bora rings for ceremonial practice. As a person who is not from First Nations ancestry, I was fortunate during this time to feel welcomed in this year by local elders who had me gravitated toward the stories read in class about country and the sacredness of the dreaming. As I later entered high school, the memory and presence of these narratives were nowhere to be found. Instead, they were replaced by a curriculum that romanticized colonial expansionism that forgot to mention the price paid by First Nations people through invasion, segregation and assimilation. Years later, I would reconnect with the local knowledge and practices of Gabi Gabi people in an area at the heart of Reckliff, the Reckliff Youth Space. It is here where I work that in 2008 was blessed by local elders Arnie Francis and Uncle Alan as a place set apart for healing and restoration. Sadly, with over a decade of gentrification imposed on this area of Cubby Cubby country, the importance of the name and connection to this place in the last 12 months has faced gradual erasure with the disruption and removal of sacred land by developers. I am told by First Nations people that without consultation of local elders, this area of the Humpibong was renamed as part of a tourist campaign to recreate and accommodate for a settlement walk. This not so silent promotion of invasion has unearthed several layers of cultural and spiritual trauma. As a response, one of the few visible stories of the, on the peninsula, I am told, involves that of the First Nations young people being called together organically through a sense of belonging to the timeless Humpibong Park and with it the youth space. It is on NADOC week at this space that one of the best teachers I know from our Flexi School shares this story and reminds me of why education and community on country brings everyone together. Yama, my name is Victoria Banshee. I am a proud Gamilare and Bidjara woman, and I'm part of the staff here at Redcliffe Youth Space. So we have 17 young people in our program, all but two identify as Aboriginal. Um, we have no young people that identify as Torres Strait Islander, and people don't really have um, that strong sense of identity when it comes from a cultural um, engagement and interaction kind of point of view. In terms of being in the Reckliff community, Morton Bay area, um, what sort of things do you feel are not visible but should be? Um, I think there is a real absence of a strong, proud Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture or acceptance of our culture and us as people in the region. This is information that was shared with me from local people. Um, so the word humpy bong is a gubby gubby word, which means like empty hearts or place of the broken hearts. And the story is that this area and around where we are situated here um, was either a massacre site or um, an old burial ground. The gubby gubby people, the local people have got a really strong connection to their country and to this place. Um, where we are situated has significant cultural, um, spiritual and emotional importance to the local people.